So we had looked at uh, graphing from standard form of an equation, and we did that by using intercepts, and we made t charts, and we said, well, if x is zero, then what does y equal? If y is zero, what does x equal? And we use that to graph those lines. Uh, so the question is today, we're just gonna add a little bit to that sort of stuff, and this is really not, I don't know if you would say this is adding, but what about if I have an equation like 3x equals 9 or negative 2y equals 4? How do I graph that when I don't have the other variable to set equal to 0? So uh, let's first kind of get this by itself. So for here, I would divide by 3 and I get that x equals 3. Over here, I'll divide by negative two, and I get y equals negative two. So you almost have, sort of have to know this, all right, and or remember this, and one of the ways that I think about this is I think, all right, x is three. It doesn't matter what's going on, x is three. And so when I see this, this is a vertical line which I know is strange because we think of X as a horizontal axis. But I go to where X is three and I draw a line. And again, you almost just have to know it. And so I think, you know, whatever's going on here, X is equal to three. So any ordered pair that falls on that line, the X value is always three, okay? I know it's a little bit strange. So if we come over here, Y is always negative two. So this actually ends up being a horizontal line. I'm not sure that I spelled horizontal right. Horizontal. Anyway, so I'll draw a horizontal line at negative two. So again, whatever's going on here, Y is always equal to negative two. So if I were to pull any ordered pairs from this line here, the y value would always be negative two. So when you simplify and when you're looking to graph something and you get it to where it's just one variable equaling one number, if it's an x, that's a vertical line at that number. If it's a y value that's equal to just, or a y that's equal to just a certain value, it's a horizontal line at that number. All right, so I wanted to kind of touch on that a little bit. And then the last thing is, sometimes when we are looking at using standard form and using intercepts, sometimes we get equations that are maybe not super user friendly. or not easy to see, all right? Uh, so if you get an equation like this and you're looking to put it into standard form, which if you remember is ax plus by equals c, I need x and y on the same side, very true. Uh, I also don't want the fraction in there, all right? Because when I use intercepts and I'm making one equal to zero, First off, if I was to make y equal to zero, then I would have to solve for x and it would not, it would be a little bit messy. So instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear my fractions. If you remember when we talked about equations, we said we want the same denominator on everything. If I'm gonna clear my fractions from this, I need to multiply the entire thing by four. And so I put, parentheses around the whole thing because I need to think about everything gets multiplied by four. This does, like distribution. This does, and this does. So what does that end up leaving me with? Well, four times y is four y. I have my equal sign. Four times negative three fourths x, it's just negative three x. And then four times two, positive 8. Then I can add 3x to both sides and I end up getting 3x plus 4y 
equals eight. I still am going to have an x-intercept that is not a whole number, but it's definitely a little bit easier and uh, user-friendly in this form. So if you find that it's difficult to deal with something with a fraction in it when you're thinking about standard form, you can multiply every single part of that equation by the denominator of that fraction to kind of clear the fractions out, and then it might be a little bit easier to see. So we're gonna do more today with intercepts, and some of them will involve a couple of the things that we looked at just now. All right, enjoy.